Hello again, Carb Unity. It's RJ back with another video. Let's get to it. Today we're going to look at box sets and some of the cool box sets that companies have been kicking out over the years. But first, my random Mike Schmidt collectible of the day in line with box sets is this set of Mike Schmidt 1980. Eight star highlight cards. Um, star Company, back in the late 80s, uh, into the early 90s, I think they still stuck around, had licenses with various players, teams, and things, and would highlight, put out a small set, typically about um, anywhere from 10 to 20 cards of that player or team or thing that they highlighted. This one from 98, uh, from 88, I mean, is the Mike Schmidt, but it's the blue parallel set. Uh, and as you can see here, it was numbered out of only a thousand. This is the glossy. The enclosed card set is one of a limited edition of only 1,000 glossy sets issued. So this came as a whole set. This piece of paper was what told you that it was uh, limited to only that many. It's interesting, it says that it's um, 1984 copyright date, but if you look on there, it flat out says at the top it's star 88, so I'm not sure what that's all about. Maybe 84 was the license there they were still holding on to. And it's just a series of cards highlighting Mike Schmidt. That's the glossy version. But this is an example of something that came as a small boxed set and was sold as such. So, that is my Mike Schmidt collectible of the day, in line with the theme of box sets. My random baseball collectible of the day is something uh, from Upper Deck. It's the All-Star Fan Fest from the pa pa Padres year. I want to say this was 94... But it's a highlight of uh, 54 cards, some of the future heroes. A lot of these people didn't weren't even part of the All-Star game. Uh, but future heroes. I'm going to go kind of quick through here. Then some of the bigger stars of the day. And then at the end, um, they got into some of the... Um, past greats. So we get back to Yout, and it goes into past greats, all-star heroes. Um, Raleigh Fingers, Reggie Jackson, Billy Williams, uh, Lou Brock, Ayler Perry, Ted Williams, Brooks Robinson, Bob Gibson, Frank Robinson, Robin Roberts. So it's a neat little box set. Again, um, this one's actually from 92, actually. So uh, this is my random baseball collectible of the day. It actually came in a, a special box for the set. Uh, probably sold it mostly at FanFest, but you can get them anywhere at the time, I'm sure. My random, um, my, my random, my baseball trivia question for the day. If you see in the background there, there is a 1991 score, Rookies and Traded, uh, box. It is still sealed in the original cellophane. This is the prize. If you can answer me this uh, kind of a box trivia question. Um, Upper Deck came in late to the game. Before them there was score. Uh, before that there was sports flicks. <clears throat> but the big three were Tops, Fleer, and Donruss. Stemming from the first year, 1981, that Donruss and Fleer were allowed to produce baseball cards. Um, it's a fascinating story about how that came to be because Topps had the, 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 the absolute Topps had the absolute dominance in baseball cards. No other company could produce cards of current major leaguers. Some people did. Topps would sue. They would have to stop. There was always small regional mom and pops doing small things for the teams. They, that was never stopped. Um, Fleer threw out a couple card sets in the 60s. 
Um, some other companies pirated, you know, team sets or sets, but Topps had the monopoly. And for the longest time, Fleer especially, but certainly other companies were trying to say, how can this be? You know, how can one company be the only one in the world allowed to make baseball cards? It's not right. It's not right. It's not right. The Topps would win every lawsuit until finally in the late 70s, they, you know, things were changing in baseball. Free agency was instituted. There was more money involved, and Tops couldn't do it anymore on its own. There was too much money involved. So Fleer and Donruss successfully argued that um, they, the Tops could not have this unique monopoly on the thing. So they, they successfully sued, and they won. But it's funny, Tops, <laughs> Tops decided to throw in this thing. Yeah, but we're the only ones who could do bubblegum in our cards. <laughs> like that mattered. I mean, by this time, nobody bought the, 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 the packs for the gum. I mean, I think they stopped buying it for the gum back in the 50s, frankly. But Topps was adamant. Only we can put gum in our packs. So Fleer and Donruss was like, okay, fine. So starting in 1981, Fleer and Donruss put out card sets. But they actually, it, it's true, at the time... They literally had to put something in the pack of cards. It was like the cards were secondary to whatever thing you put in there for some reason, the way Topps had uh, structured the deal uh, the judge. So Fleer and Donruss couldn't just put out baseball cards without something in it. They had to, they had to add something. So starting in 1981, what did Donruss include in every pack of cards? And what did Fleer included every pack of cards. It went up till about the early 90s, and then, you know, nowadays nobody puts anything in the cards. It's just cards, which is what we want to begin with. But when the lawsuit was settled and Donruss and Fleer started kicking out cards, what was the random insert? What was the physical item that went, went that was other than baseball cards? What did Fleer put in and what did Donruss put in? That's the trivia question. Get that right, and I'll send you out this SCORE 1991 Rookie and Traded set. All right, I'm going to highlight today, um, I'm already pretty late into this, some of the cool um, sets that have been kicked out over the years as box sets. So Sports Flicks came out with their cars starting in 86. Uh, it, there were sets, packs, just like everybody else. It was a box of packs. But they also produced this box set called Decades Greats. And it is 75 cards of Hall of Fame players. I'm not going to show you too many of that. There's this, there's these trivia questions on top, and I don't want to have to pull too much to get to the actual cards down there. But I'll just show you the top one, which is a Babe Ruth card. So they all looked like this. There were color photos for the for the more recent guys. Um, stats on the back best of the 30s. They had a few best of the 30s, 40s, 50s, and so on. And um, it was released in a box set. And I think it's a fantastic little set that I have in my collection. I hope you think so as well. I'm going to set that off to the side. Another thing that came out is player sets. Um, Bay Pete Rose actually licensed his own likeness for a set of 25, 120, I'm sorry, cards by a company, um, this is how you, you look it up, Renata Galasso, Pete Rose set from 85. It's a set of 120 cards, and each one in here is just a picture of Pete Rose and a quick snippet bio. Let me pull one out for you. Come on, here's one right here. So there's black and white and color. This looks like a, 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 a celebrity softball game, actually. The uniform, take a look at the uniform with the big star on it. And uh, it actually had some questions and answers. They, they kind of like put a question to Pete. Did you have a favorite team that you followed as a boy? And then he would answer. And um, so it's a whole set like that, highlighting just Pete Rose. So company, card companies would put out just um, random sets of 
highlighting players. There's a famous one of um, Nolan Ryan back in the late 90, or the early 90s. And there's a famous one in 92, uh, the whole Babe Ruth one. Um, those sets. There's another cool thing that uh, came out at one time, the metal cards, uh, I think it was Metal Impressions. And this company made um, a series of cards, card sets, quote unquote, which was essentially five cards and five cards alone. There's another one in here, isn't there? Oh, this one's only four, wow. Of some star player. Uh, this one's the Ripken set. I know there were mantle sets. Uh, I know there were other famous players as well. Um, but there's solid metal. Fold it up, you know, fold it up the end for safety there. Just a uh, quick little set. If you're a fan of a player, you'd have to get this. I'm not necessarily a fan of Cal, but this actually came in a box of collectibles that I got. So it's part of my collection now, which I'm happy to say. Uh, Ripken Jr. All Metal Cards. This was another thing that companies often did. And you can still find these all over time. Then you'd get things that weren't necessarily professional baseball today. Here is Topps Senior Professional Baseball Association. Back in the late uh, 80s, early 90s, a bunch of retired players living in Florida thought it would be really cool to start a, a professional baseball league of these retired guys, guys who could no longer compete at the major league level, or, um, you know, wannabes who only had a cup of coffee and never went anywhere. So you had these retired players. Here's George Foster, long after he retired. Um, Cleet Boyer was a manager. You know, names you know, if you go through the set, there were about, um, I want to say six or seven, Bernie Carbo, six or seven different um, Al Roboski companies that made these sets. So you can find a couple different versions of these um, card sets. Dick Williams was a manager. Um, again, highlighting the senior league, Greg Nettles. And it came, it came simply as a box set, the whole thing, one pack and one pack only. One box gave you the entire set. So, and then when it wasn't a team, uh, well, it, was, it wasn't a player or it wasn't a uh, subset or something like that, you'd get things highlighting the teams. Here is uh, the Yankee Stadium Legacy card set. Uh, when they redid, when they tore down the Yankee Stadium and they put up the new Yankee Stadium, uh, Upper Deck put out this 100 card set uh, featuring Yankee greats. Um, it's not a particularly great set, um, but it, you know, it, it came in a box. I had to have it because I'm such a, you know, a fan of sets and, and it wasn't very expensive. And it is the Yankees, and it was Yankee Stadium, so you kind of had to. It's funny too; they didn't have the they didn't have the rights to print Babe Ruth's image, or Mickey Mantle's image, or Lou Gehrig's image. So they just kind of put jersey cards. It's kind of like what um, Leaf is doing right now with uh, my favorite, the Leaf Lumber set. Anyway, it, this whole set just highlighted some of the greats of the day and a little bio on the back about who they were and why they were important to the Yankees. So you'd get those kind of box sets, uh, teams or events. In that, that case, the event was the retirement of Yankee Stadium. And one last event, one by 2008 Phillies World Series uh, set. A Deck kicked this out in 2008 to celebrate the Phillies World Series team got a citizen's bank actually this this was something else i just threw this in there because i didn't know what to do with this one card <laughs> it has this a uh, little thing a postcard a little postcard of uh 2008 world champs and then in there are 50 cards one each of the hall of the uh world series roster all the players i'm going to find somewhere in here was a card 
of um, Sotoguchi, who was a member of the team. I always felt bad for Sotoguchi because he was on the Phillies team that year. And he was on the World Series. He sat on the bench the whole World Series. The poor guy never once got to play in the field or come up to bat even as a pinch hitter. But he was on the World Series team, so to Gucci. And he was a great player. I mean, he was he was a good, set, steady um, player for our team that year. And for whatever reason, I, I know Charlie liked him because Charlie Manuel um, played several years in Japan. Uh, was a pretty much a, a big legend in Japan because um, how great he was at the time. But here's Soka Taguchi. So Taguchi beat a Japanese player. Charlie liked him, liked the style and whatnot. But he never even got, had an appearance in the World Series. Everybody else did. Everybody else was in the World Series at one time or another in some capacity, except for So Taguchi. So I feel bad for him. Anyway, that's the. Uh, that's the set of cards from that. So that's a look at uh, various box sets um, that are out there. There's there's millions. I mean, if you're a baseball collector, you know there's millions of such sets. Uh, I just wanted to highlight a couple of my favorites. Um, don't forget the trivia question. Again, there it is right there. That score rookie and traded can be yours if you can tell me, starting in 1981 when Donerson Fleer started making baseball cards what did they insert in their packs other than base, other, other than bubblegum and baseball cards? So and email me with the correct answer. I'll repeat the question and put my email in the description below, and I'll send you that rookie score, rookie and traded from 1991, still sealed. All right, I hope you enjoyed that little trip down box sets with me. I want to thank everybody for uh, taking the time to watch. Please like, subscribe, and all that. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Take care.